Hey guys, Austin Maliolo here in the Hand Plan Studio, breaking down some handstand push-up discussions. More specifically, breaking down how do we scale the handstand push-up for skill, versus strength, versus speed within metabolic conditioning workouts. Again, bringing this to the bigger discussion of when we scale, we should be varying our scaling options, but also they should be dovetailing nicely into the intent of the workout. So our, vari our variance in the scaling options will be dictated and predicated on the workout itself and what we're looking to achieve. Now, if it's not clear by the workout itself, we always break that down in our lesson plans for you. And then if that's not clear, don't worry, the scaling options will highlight what we wanna focus on from a scaling perspective. So let's start from a skill perspective. There's a few skills that we're looking for when we're upside down. The biggest one is going to be being upside down. So from a skill perspective at the base level, getting upside down into the pike position is gonna be really challenging for some. So again, that just might be holding in this position. And again, skill and strength here are gonna be absolutely combined, okay? So holding this position. Now, we can always bring the feet up onto a box or a bench to get more up and over. And that will start to transition a little bit into, again, one of the higher skill pieces we can have is simply practicing kickups and then kicking up into a handstand. Practicing kick up is an exhausting movement for newer athletes. It's challenging, they might not always kick up or not at all, but they're holding into that position and they're kicking up and trust me, the shoulders will get a workout. They're also working on how to get their center of mass up and over their head, which is a very new skill for many people. So again, you can just start to teach getting into the scissor position, the lunge position, then you just teach, all right, th this bent knee is the one that's gonna be kicking, and this heel is when you try to get close to the wall. And then you just, again, try to get the heel to the wall. And you can just practice this. And then over time, we kick them up into the handstand hold, and then back down. So again, that's a way that we can start to play with that skill. And of course, it goes into that strength development. They're not independent of one another and fully devoid of the other adaptations we're looking for. Just one might be highlighted more than the other. So again, that's gonna be tiring. Gets your heart rate up to shine to do that. So trust me, people will get a stimulus, even though if it looks a little different than what, what they might be used to. That's a really good option to think about there. Now, strength development. Now, there's a few ways we can play with this. From scaling option number one, could be a standing dumbbell strict press. Right now, adding a little more challenge here, this way, from here is pressing up. You want to add a little more of balance. You can always bring one foot off the ground or the other foot off the ground. And that's going to work on a little more stabilization. Okay. So again, that's an option there from strength development. Number one, another strength development one, we're going to have to make sure the volume's low and the athletes have some capacity, but negatives. Okay, now what that would look like is we kick upside down here, and then we'd slowly come down, head towards the wall, elbows breaking away, touching the top of the head, and then coming back down. So again, also teaching those proper mechanics. So again, this is where strength and skill also dovetail nicely in for those athletes that have a little more capacity. Teaching the athletes that the elbows break away from the wall. The head breaks towards the wall and your top of your head touches down. Having an ab mat down there is always nice too, because it's going to compress a little bit, but it also is a nice little safety net. So those are a couple scaling options for strength development, okay? Now from there, speed. How do we work on some speed here? We want to keep the heart rate up. Now we can always get back on the dumbbells and we can do dumbbell push press because now we're thinking about kipping handstand push up. So again, the dip drive press like so. So that's going to really be a really fun option for those that might be struggling getting upside down there. Now, yes, we can always get upside down and kip, but we're going to want to stay away from those options that slow it down. The higher volume stuff can be here. Now you can always play with a few different ones. You can combine them too, a little fancy, but we can always do that for those athletes in their intermediary journey that have skills and strength, but might not have the volume to add the speed. We can always kick up into a handstand hold for X amount of time and then come out and then go through some push press to take that body through a full range of motion. So we can start to smash these together, which can be a super beneficial way to play with this stuff. So again, just a few ways to scale handstand push ups depending on speed, skill, or strength. So work hard and have fun with these options.